All right, everybody, it's 2023, a quick update. All my hosts are running great. We, uh, if you see my last two videos, uh, we've switched over to an image-based workflow, all managed in GitHub and via the GitHub registry. Uh, just crossed a 32 day mark on that with all my machines and everything is running swimmingly as well as the OpenSUSE micro OS laptop is rocking and rolling. So uh, both of those things are looking really good and vanilla OS came out uh, publicly. I don't have time to dedicate hardware to it, but I am sitting in the discord and you should definitely check it out, see the reviews, hang out in the discord and try to figure out, uh, you know, where it's going. Um, so I'm very excited to see others kind of take this model and um, push it forward. Let's see what we have today. However, I'm not going to talk about host operating systems. I'm going to talk about toolboxes and distro boxes. And many of the things that I'm doing wouldn't be possible for me without distro box because um, you know, I, I need my place where I could do my Unixy things and things like that and install packages and use software that everybody else is using. Um, you know, uh, I'm kind of moving all of that into my containers and off of the host, right? So for me, it was very important to be able to run what I was used to at the time, which is like an Ubuntu, um, you know, user space. I like to app get install them and have that work, right? We all have years and years of scripts or whatever you've had, um, you know, that you brought along with you. Um, so that flexibility to run any image is like really important to me. And even if you're not into the running a different distro thing, that doesn't really matter. Even if you're using Fedora on Fedora, you know, even in the non-silver blue uh, manner, I feel that that's still the way to go, right? Keep your host clean, uh, whether that's silver blue or normal Fedora or, or Kinote or whatever. And, um, you know, let's keep all that entropy inside the container and make it nice and easy to manage. We have been spending a lot of time talking about the host, right? Fundamentally, the host doesn't matter. It should not matter. Um, and one of the things as I was setting up new hardware is... Um, wouldn't it be neat is if your terminal experience out of the box was managed to begin with. So many of you have seen tools like GNU Stow, things like that that are used to manage your dot files in your terminal. I think everyone gets excited when they figure out the first time they can modify their prompt, right? And you're like really proud that that's, you know, a thing that you learned and or configuring your favorite, you know, your favorite text editor and things like that. That's always been around as an idea. However, since I'm kind of moving to this managed workflow, this kind of cloud native is what I call it, workflow. Um, I had never bothered to go through all of that stuff, right? Because I kind of tended to use uh, things stock, right? Um, when when I worked at Canonical, it was very important for us when you're working on Ubuntu to run what you ship, right? So I didn't run a lot of customizations because, you know, if you want to fix something, you want to fix it in distro. So I never set up tons of aliases. I never did all that, that kind of stuff, because the idea there is, um, you know, I, you, I want to keep the thing as stock as possible. Um, however, if I could do manage dot files and kind of uh, go with that workflow and I could keep my images alongside my operating system images, well, now I could just have the best of both worlds. Let's not just manage the OS. Let's actually manage what I would argue is the more important part, which is where I am day to day as like a Linux user in a terminal. Um, now, if you're a new user, hopefully you never have to come here unless you like really want to, right? But for a lot of people, they might be professionals. Uh, you know, they might be system administrators or they work in cloud and things like that. So part of the reason I like to focus on this area is... For those people, there are changes, um, you know, and, and cool new things that you could do that you might not be aware of. So in, instead of talking about hosts all the time, I decided, you know, when's the last time we really paid attention to the image that we're doing and that we're using and consuming, right? Before I just wanted the stock default Ubuntu image because that's what ships, right? Um, however, these images were made consumed to be consumed like by EC2 or your cloud provider or, you know, whatever thing you're, you're using. Right. So no one's really taking the time to say, what would a really, really good image look like? Whose entire job is to be your Unix command line experience. Um, so I decided I was going to build that. And then after I decided and did it, it became obvious to me that 
I'm going to spend the rest of my time arguing on the internet over picking the wrong text editor or things like that. So initially I was going to call this bling box, which was your cool bling terminal, right? That's like, Hey, I'm starting. Here's your cool terminal with all the cool stuff. And it gets everything. But instead I decided to go with a more toolkit based approach so that anybody who wants to make a custom image can do so, but also give you things out of the box. So you could just start off with manage dot files on the internet in Git and things like that. So it can live where our OS is. What if we could just redo the entire Unix terminal experience to be cloud native, right? Um, so I took a stab at it. Let's see what happens. So this is the repo here. I call it box kit because naming things is hard. Distro box, toolbox, you know. Um, and first let's start off both. Now, when I say distro box toolbox, I'm going to use the terms interchangeably, um, you know, use whatever tool works for you. Um, so the toolbox project has an images repo now where they're keeping things like you know, Ubuntu images, Debian images, things like that, that kind of have those extra packages and things installed in there that make them more conducive and easier to run inside like a toolbox distro box. If you've ever used like the normal Ubuntu cloud image, you got to add a bunch of stuff in there to kind of make it useful. Um, so if, if you look at the changes here, I wanted to do something in Alpine. So, you know, I, I submitted a container file for 3.17, things like that. So we have stock images from a bunch of distros um, so why don't I bling it up a little bit? So this is what I did. So what I did is I created a new repo and I created a new container file. And I decided that I was, I was going to use Alpine, um, for a few reasons that are, are outlisted in the readme. Basically it's got a bunch of cool stuff in there. APK is really fast. It almost, it's, you know, it's a very small image that starts with, it kind of has everything that you would need like every important, everything that's important is already in there. Um, APK is fast. I'm going to say that like 50 times because like, it's just fast. And it, um, it kind of feels like if there was an image that I would start, that's entire job is to be small and only give me a terminal experience. I Alpine's a good place to start. So I figured I would start, I would do that. So I'm deriving from the toolbox images, Alpine toolbox. And then, um, I'm going to do some things here. First, I'm going to install some extra packages. I'm going to talk about those in a minute, but I'm also doing some convenience things in my distro box that might be useful. So the, there are some problems that I have with my existing setup. Am I on the host? Am I in my distro box? If you've listened to anything I've been saying, obviously I've like, I need to be in my distro box. If I'm on my host, it means I have to do something that I didn't expect to do, or I don't like, you know, I'm angry if I have to open my host terminal, but it is nice to type RPM OS tree status or whatever. Right. Um, however, those commands aren't available in, uh, in your distro boxes by default. So I was like, you know what, let me just sim link a few commands, you know, that I would use for one offs. Now you're not going to write fancy scripts with like this kind of things like that. It's mostly just to be able to use that. If I actually wanted to do something a little bit more complex, then I might want to open up the host terminal. But what if I could just stay inside my distro box? And that is the thing that I'm interacting with. Um, so I've, I've created those sim links for you because distro box actually does support you running things on the host. So Docker, Flackpat, Podman, RPM OS tree. If I run them in the box, it'll actually run them on the host and kind of show me. It's like, a, you know, I'm tricking myself um, into that kind of thing. Um, and then I have some extra packages. I decided, you know, what would a cool CLI look like? And I decided to start from scratch because I'm also going to manage all of my dot files and I kind of want to build it from scratch over time to see what that would look like as opposed to doing like one huge migration and every once in a while, when you're changing a model, it doesn't hurt to start fresh, you know, no assumptions. Let's just see what happens. You know, so I like using things like BTOP for dot file. Uh, I discovered this tool called Shemwa. That's this right here, which is going to be my, <laughs> um, this is going to be how I chose to manage my dot files, whatever tool you use does not matter because I'm making this a template for you. However, Chamois is pretty cool because it can attach to Git and auto sync and then all my hosts and stuff. 
Um, there's plenty of documentation and videos out there on that tool. I highly recommend it. So, um, yeah, I decided, you know what, um, I'm going to install these packages. My starship prompt that I prefer to use places just as my task execution engine. It's like, um, oh boy, that could be a whole video, but if you're not using just, you should check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, as I said, chamois for my dot file management. And then a few tools that I like, I like B top is blingy micro and helix text editors or whatever. Anyway, whatever thing that you need in your like Unix CLI, start to think about that for a little bit. Um, and then the second piece of this is a GitHub action that will take this container file. And similarly to how we're doing with the OS, I'm going to build and publish um, a container that I sign that is this customized Alpine image. So now I have a distro box here. We look on the host and we do distro box list. So you can see here when I created this, I pulled it, I named it Alpine. And now all of the things in that Docker file are here. So I'm kind of declaring what packages I are, I just want in the image. So this is where I ran into a problem. It's like, well, you know, if I'm going to make the world's greatest, you know, command line experience, I got to have all my bling, the configs, you know, the fan, you know, I, I got to set all the themes to match and do this kind of experience. However, as I thought about that, as I realized, Hmm, do I really want to cross that boundary? So what I've decided to do here is these images are basically the way this thing is kind of designed right now is to kind of be a bootstrapper for whatever tool you're using to manage your dot files in case for me, chamois. So I will have this terminal. I will install chamois and then my dot files will come down. And then that's where all my customization is going to be. But my image is really just going to be like an operating system image, except it's my CLI. So now as I use tools, sure, I can APK add a tool that you read about on Hacker News that day. But as you use it and you're like, man, I really want to use this, I can go ahead and stick it in my image. And then eventually it'll just come to all my machines. But I'm keeping because... Uh, but I'm keeping the configs separate from that that has my actual customizations and all my dot files and things like that. Additionally, the reason I chose Shemwa as my uh, uh, as my dot files manager, sorry, it's going to be hard to figure that uh, to keep keep figuring that out, is um, it has support for password managers. So if you have secrets, you don't want to keep those like in your dot files and things like that. So it supports like one password. Uh, Bitwarden and a bunch of the other ones. I think it even supports Vault and AWS, the secret manager thing. So, you know, any keys or any work-related stuff that you have, um, you know, I'm, I'm not planning on checking those into my dot files at all because actually I want that to be public because I want to share it with my friends and things like that. Um, so if you take the GitHub action and this entire setup and you clone this repo, right? Um, you could say, well, I don't like George's choices, you know, I'm going to use OpenSUSE instead. And then you're going to go and change those extra packages and change this to be, um, uh, you know, zip, zipper install or, you know, or whatever thing that you've got going on. So the reason I did this, knowing that everyone was going to just kind of look at it and say, oh, he just chose the wrong apps. That's not how I would have done it, is I kind of designed it for you to fork it, change it to be exactly how you want and then run that as your distro box image for a while and see how that gets on. So currently right now, I'm building them a day after the toolbox images. Those build on Monday, I'm building mine on Tuesdays. Um, and my idea there is to kind of over time as I'm managing my dot files and figuring out what, you know, if you start with an empty distro box, over time you're starting to realize what tools you need and start to add those and get and then since I'm using multiple machines, kind of see how that works out for me. You know, uh, I'm going to add, add a thing and then, you know, uh, oh no, it's not on my laptop. Do I need to do an update? Oh, there it is. You know, uh, that, that kind of thing. So I, I'm kind of experimenting with that. Um, so the scope here isn't really, I know, you know, I told a friend about this and he's like, oh dude, you're just going to, right. There's this thing called modern Unix. He's like, are you just going to shove everything in there and alias the hell out of everything? And it's just going to be like a glitter bomb and, and crazy. No, not really. 
right? I'm going to make my own tasteful choices, but I think it's more important, especially now, since we have the GitHub action and everything you need to create your own images, um, you know, give people something that they could easily fork and, and customize it for themselves. Because fundamentally, people ask me this all the time, and it is the most unimportant question, right? What's better, silver, blue, open SUSE, vanilla, at the end of the day, as long as that's hitting what you need maintenance wise, and for me, it's like none, um, the way you're gonna use all of these machines um, is gonna be the same. So why not see what a, a kind of a cloud native distro box would look like? Um, and as you can see, mine is very basic, right? So. I'm sure someone out there is going to design like a cool blingy thing that has all of the tooling that you need to do that. And then you'll be able to copy and paste from other people and derive off each other and base off of each other's. So definitely fork it, click, uh, tag your thing with the box of command. Um, I'm, I'm having a really good time with this. It's something I should have done long ago, whether you choose Shemwa or another dot files management tool, that doesn't really matter. Right. What, what I'm concentrating on here is giving you an image that has the tools you need to get that config onto um, the box itself and then keep that clean separation um, on top of a host. So uh, fire it up and, and, you know, install NeoVim, do all the all the blingy things that you have to do and uh, let me know how you get on. And with that, thanks for listening. And uh, I don't know. Happy Unixing. I don't I don't know what people say these days, but uh, have a good one and we'll see you all around.